Good morning. Thank you for being with us again today. And this morning we're studying Mark chapter 4 in the opening verses. It's a parable, a parable that many of you know. But I think there's teaching here for each one of us. Listen as I read. I'm going to read the whole thing through and then we're going to take time to really look and see what Jesus is saying. It says, Mark 4 verse 1. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the Sea of Galilee. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out in the lake, while all the people were along the shore and the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering his seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that it did not bear grain. Still other fell on good soil. It came up, grew, produced a crop, multiplied thirty, sixty or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He said to him, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside everything is said in parables, so that they may be seeing but never perceiving, and hearing but never understanding. Otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. And Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word's sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of the riches, the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, produce a crop, 30, 60, or even a hundred times what was sown. Now, there are three sections. First of all, the parable itself. Secondly, Jesus talks about parables. And thirdly, he d explains this parable of the sower. So let's just take a look very carefully at the opening verses. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat out in the lake while all the people along the shore on the water's edge. Now that was very practical in many ways. First of all, he couldn't go any further back or he'd have got wet. But there's even more than that. You see, as Jesus sat in the boat and began to teach, his voice would carry on the water and everyone could hear him. He was using it almost like a loudspeaker, and the people could hear very clearly. Very neat move, very practical, very down to earth, and that's exactly how our Jesus is. He always had practical answers for the situation. Now, he taught them things by parables, and I think we have a particular problem with this, because we don't speak in parables. We do sometimes use a story to make a point, but not in the way they did in Jesus' day. It was a natural way for a teacher, a rabbi, to teach. He would tell a story that would make the point. And I think that many of the pictures we get in the scripture are so Middle East that we don't fully understand it and don't fully appreciate it. And some of the things that Jesus taught were quite obviously specifically for his day, and they really don't have any parallel in our day. Then we have a problem in understanding that's where we need biblical commentaries. We need the writings of others to give us the background and the understanding of what he was really teaching. But this one is relatively simple on the surface. He says, there was a farmer who went out to sow seed. Now, of course, immediately you have to forget everything you've ever seen about agriculture in this country. What you have to picture is a man walking along with seed in a pouch on his left taking handfuls with his right hand and just scattering it. A terribly wasteful way of sowing seed. A very primitive way. But that's what they did in those days. Just throwing the seed. Some of it would even blow away. 
but he was falling on all sorts of different ground. He wasn't just placing it in holes, just throwing, scattering. That's the way they did. Well, what happened? Well, Jesus says there are four ways that it fell. As he was scattering the seed along, the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and withered because they had no root. Others fell among thorns which grew up and choked them so they didn't bear grain. Others fell on good ground. Now there's the picture. Four different ways. Let's just study a couple of these and see what Jesus is saying to us. First of all, and he explains this later on, he says, don't you understand? The farmer sows the word. The seed he's talking about in this picture is the word of God. And the farmer can be one of a number of people. It could be Jesus, because he sowed the word of God. Everything that came out of his mouth was the word of God. But, what about us today? Well, I think he still sows the seed. I think he does it through preachers. I think he does it through radio, through television, in all sorts of ways. The seed is sown all the time. God's word. And that's why I love Charles Stanley. He preaches the word of God. He expounds the word of God. He illuminates the word of God. He sows the seed. Now, for you and for me listening, whether we listen on the radio or watch on television, what sort of soil does that seed fall on? Don't you find sometimes your soil is different? And it has varying degrees of success. But it falls on the soil. It is God's word to us. Now, what was the first sort of soil that Jesus talked about? He said, some fell and the birds came and ate it up. Well, what about those people? Well, where the seed was sown, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes the word away that was sown in them. You become a preacher, you know exactly what Jesus meant. You preach, you preach your heart out, you preach the word of God, and some of those people hear it, and before they've even left the sanctuary, that's gone. Satan's just taken it right away. Jesus says that's the picture where it fell on the side, and the birds just came and devoured it. Never even got into the earth. That happens today, friend. You say, why do they come to church? Oh, I think a variety of reasons. I think some of them haven't the slightest idea why they come. They wouldn't even know if you asked them. You sat down and said, well, why are you here? Well, I always come. I've been coming for years. Great. What's it doing for you? Oh, I don't know. Never thought about it. Well, the word is preached. The seed is sown. It's just plucked away, just taken away, gone in a flash. Yes, Satan does that. And remember that Satan's always there. Then something else. He says, some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Now Jesus says, others, like the seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But they have no root. They only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Well, you've seen this happen, I'm sure. Somebody hears of Jesus Christ. And do they get turned on? I mean, they are absolutely full of it. And they're going around and proclaiming it, and you wish they were locked up. But Jesus says, for some of them, it falls on rocky places. And you know what happens. If soil is there, it's just very shallow, and the seed comes in. And yes, sure enough, immediately there's some growth, but it can't last. And as soon as anything happens, it withers. And so do they. They get into some sort of crisis situation, and immediately they're gone. You say, well, where's so-and-so? They were here each week. Well, they've given up. Well, what do you mean they've given up? You see, they had no root. And do you see how important this is? We need to have roots that go down. We say, just a minute, Richard, how do we get those roots? Basically, by studying the Word of God. We need to really get our roots into the Word. We need the nourishment of the Word of God. We need that Word flowing into us and through us that spiritually we may grow. And if not, as soon as persecution comes, as soon as the crisis comes, as soon as we get into difficulties, we're just going to wither. 
spiritually we're going to be nothing. We're just going to give up. And that happens. And I've seen it and you've seen it. Be guarded. And what we have to do, when things are right, when things are going well, that's when we need to put the roots down. Because if we do, when the troubles come and the difficulties come, we can handle it because we begin to draw from the roots. And we need to put our roots deeply into Jesus Christ, deeply into his word. We need to know him. We need to be able to share him. We need to be able to go to him and know the one to whom we go. There are many Christian believers who name the name of Jesus Christ, but they don't really know him. We need to know him in depth. We need to know him in reality. And then the roots are deep. You see, if you stop and think about it, if Jesus Christ is dwelling in me, and Jesus Christ is dwelling in you, we have absolutely everything we need for every situation. All we have to do is draw upon it. You don't have to go and ask for more love. You don't have to ask for more peace. You've got Jesus. He is love. He is peace. And you can go through the nine fruit of the Spirit. He is all that. And He dwells in you. And He dwells in me. And I've said to you before, I believe often in our prayers, we ask for things that God's already given us. So when we go to Him in prayer, be sure that we don't get repetitious. We thank Him that we have Jesus, and then by the Holy Spirit, we draw on Him. The Word, as John tells us in John 1 and 1. And as we draw on the Word, our roots are in Him. Our roots are deeply in Him. We must know Jesus. Paul says it. He says, I want to know Jesus. I want to know Jesus. And as we know Jesus, we can face anything of life. The first seed was just snapped up by Satan. It never took root. The second seed did take root, but not in any depth of soil. And it withered so quickly. Friend, if you're walking with Jesus, let your roots go down into the Word of God. Let your roots go down into Jesus Christ, the Word Himself. And you'll always have something to draw on in every circumstance of life.